Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Lo, for your nice introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Michelle today and also Professor Lo, Professor Yuxing, and uh, uh, committee members uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it's my great honor to receive this uh, materials today, uh, Rising Star Award. I'm Guang Mingzhou from uh, Tsinghua Shenzhen International uh, Graduate School. Today, I will talk about the materials design and the mechanism for high energy lithium sulfur batteries. So, briefly introduce the background. So, we understand that uh, with the increasing uh, consumption of fossil energy, will cause this uh, increase of uh, carbon dioxide. Dioxide uh, concentration as, uh, will lead to the global warming and then threaten to the ecological uh, civilization. Therefore, uh, the countries around the world uh, start the carbon neutral actions uh, that's trying to reach a state of uh, net zero carbon dioxide uh, emissions. So we can see that from uh, the image that uh, many countries that try to reach this uh, carbon neutrality uh, on 2050 or 2060. So developing and uh, utilizing renewable energy uh, is a fundamental way to achieve carbon neutrality, such as using uh, wind energy, solar energy, uh, nuclear energy, and tidal energy to replace uh, oil, gas, and also coal. Um, but we understand that actually these uh, renewable energy are uh, time and spatial uh, distribution unevenly. Therefore, we need to uh, store this uh, renewable energy and then uh, we can use them uh, freely. Actually, uh, secondary batteries are, are one of uh, very promising uh, energy storage uh, systems. And from this uh, developing load map, we can see that actually uh, the energy density of uh, secondary batteries increase uh, with the time from uh, lead acid battery to such as uh, nickel metal hydride battery and to uh, lithium ion batteries. But we are still uh, trying to just develop some new battery systems uh, towards high energy density, lower cost, and higher safety. Lithium sulfur batteries uh, is actually one of the very promising uh, energy storage battery systems that's uh, with very high energy density that has the potential to reach uh, this battery 500 consortium uh, sets goal, 500 watts hour per kilogram, and also has the possibility to just reduce the cost uh, below uh, 100 US dollar uh, per, per uh, kilowatt hour. Sulfur is also rich and uh, environmentally friendly. Um, therefore, uh, lithium sulfur battery is very promising, but uh, despite this promising uh, 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 future, there are still uh, many challenges actually that impede the applications of uh, lithium uh, sulfur batteries, such as the highly insulating nature of sulfur and lithium sulfides, and also the shorter uh, polysulfides uh, between cathode and anode that will cause damage to the uh, lithium anode and also uh, the solid, liquid solid conversion uh, is quite slow. And because the different densities of sulfur and lithium sulfide, there is a huge volume change, about 80% uh, during this uh, cycling process, which will also destroy the electrodes. And uh, because of the use of lithium metal, uh, people will also uh, cancel about the safety, such about uh, the uh, dendritic lithium formation and also the instability of lithium metal. So uh, in the past years, uh, my group and myself are just trying to address the above issues by using different uh, uh, strategies, uh, including uh, advanced uh, sub cathode design, uh, some uh, new uh, battery configuration, and also uh, lithium anode uh, protection techniques as well as uh, multifunctional binders, separators, and also electrolytes. And then uh, we also developed some uh, in-situ uh, characterization techniques to review uh, the uh, mechanism, uh, including new mechanism and also the freedom uh, mechanism. So today, I will mainly focus on the uh, advanced sulfur case of the past, as well as this uh, in-situ uh, characterization uh, methods. So the first uh, strategy on uh, sulfur cathode that I want to introduce is uh, physical confinement. So we just try to use uh, two graphene membranes, uh, one as the uh, gra uh, graphene current character and another one as the uh, graphene coating uh, membranes. 
and uh, together with the uh, sulfur layer, let's to, uh, to construct this graphing sulfur and the graphing sandwich uh, uh, structure. So by using uh, this sandwich structure, we can uh, efficiently uh, block the dissolution of uh, this polysulfides and also improve the electrical conductivity of the sulfur. Then uh, we can reuse uh, some migrated uh, polysulfides to alleviate these shuttle effects and then uh, improve the cycling stability of the lithium sulfur batteries. So this is two layers of graphene, but we found actually we can further just uh, uh, try to uh, design this uh, nanomolar, uh, maxine and carbon nanotube uh, based uh, uh, structure, sandwich structure. That's actually, we can form uh, like this structure, which can have uh, multiple uh, physical barriers, not only two graphing uh, membrane that have uh, two such as two barriers. This one uh, in microscope, that's actually we can have uh, multiple uh, barriers trying to uh, con uh, confine this uh, dissolved lithium polysulfide and then we can further just extend uh, the cycling uh, stability. But actually uh, we understand that sulfur is nonpolar materials and also carbon materials uh, are nonpolar materials. So layer bonding uh, is very strong, but during the uh, charging and discharging, they will become uh, such as lithium polysulfide or lithium sulfide then the sulfur species will become uh, polar materials. Therefore, you can see that actually the detach uh, of the materials from the carbon materials. This will cause uh, the capacity decay. So how to address these issues? Uh, we just try to uh, introduce some uh, polar functional groups to just uh, uh, increase uh, the interaction between uh, carbon materials and the uh, lithium polysulfides. So uh, uh, at that time, we just try to introduce some uh, he uh, hetero uh, doping atoms such as nitrogen, sulfur, or boron that can uh, uh, form some uh, polar functional group that can uh, increase the bonding energy. For example, here, we can see that actually uh, the bonding between graphene and uh, uh, lithium polysulfide is actually the bonding is only 0.78 EV. Uh, which is lower than the bonding between the electrolytes and also the lithium polysulfides. So this is the reason that's why lithium polysulfides uh, are preferred to dissolve into the electrolytes. But after the doping of uh, hetero atoms, such as sulfur, uh, nitrogen doping or nitrogen and sulfur co-doping, we can see actually this bonding can be greatly uh, improved. And also the battery performance uh, can be also enhanced. Besides the carbon host materials, we also try to uh, uh, introduce the function uh, such as some necessary components in batteries with also uh, these uh, functions such as uh, this binder. We just uh, combine this uh, PEI and PVP and uh, using the hydrogen bonding to form this copolymer PVP and PEI, which can have the self heating uh, properties. So this three dimensional cross linking network by this uh, dynamic uh, hydrogen bonds between this NH2 uh, functional group and carbon oxygen double bonds that can endow this uh, copolymer uh, self-heating uh, properties. And also these two functional groups can also interact with lithium polysulfides, which also can prevent them uh, from dissolving uh, into the electrolytes. So here is the demonstration as we can see after the uh, copolymer uh, formed, uh, even we cut them uh, into two pieces, and just uh, touch them uh, for two hours, uh, they can self heal and then uh, can withstand such as 60 gram uh, weights. And also during the fabrication of high mass loading electrode, we will see many cracks uh, because of the thick electrode. But after cycling, we can also see that uh, because of the self healing uh, properties, they can also self heal. So uh, make the integrated structure during uh, the long term cycling uh, process. And we also use the in-situ Laman uh, spectrum uh, to understand uh, this uh, bonding uh, of this self-healing polymers. Actually, we can see use this self-healing uh, bond, actually uh, much less uh, lithium polysulfide can be observed during uh, charging and discharging, also uh, indicating uh, this alleviation of shuttle uh, effects. And by using these self-heating binders, uh, we can just uh, improve the capacity and also the cycling stability of the electrodes, even under high mass loading conditions. 
Uh, more importantly, uh, the self-healing uh, property can be applied into the uh, flexible uh, lithium sulfur batteries, uh, especially under this such as uh, bending or folding conditions. That these self-healing properties can make uh, this uh, electrode keep uh, uh, their original uh, structure. And uh, even after uh, 2,800 uh, uh, bending cycles, they can uh, keep almost the, the same uh, capacity. So this is the second strategy uh, that we use the chemical bonding to improve the uh, uh, cycling performance. And the third strategy that I want to introduce is the catalytic effects. That's because during the cycling uh, process, the sulfur will become lithium polysulfide and then to this final product, lithium sulfide. So usually uh, lithium sulfide will form some large particles and it is also highly uh, insulating. So if we cannot uh, convert them uh, efficiently, we will lose uh, some active fuels. So if we can just introduce this catalytic uh, effects that can such as help uh, effective, uh, effectively decompose this lithium sulfide, such as become a lithium sulfur cluster The uh, lithium islands, uh, we need to uh, break down the lithium sulfur bond. And then the lithium islands need to diffuse away, then this uh, process uh, is finished. So, uh, firstly, uh, we just try to use a series of metal sulfides as examples. And through uh, uh, the, uh, DFT calculations, we can see that actually compared to the commonly used carbon materials with very high decomposition energy barrier. When we introduce the uh, metal sulfides as the catalyst, uh, we can briefly uh, reduce uh, the decomposition uh, energy barrier. And also we calculate the diffusion uh, energy barrier. That I have just mentioned that the materials, this uh, uh, metal sulfide based catalyst can uh, reduce uh, the diffusion uh, uh, energy barrier, such as from uh, 0.3 EV to just 0.1 uh, EV indicating uh, the effective uh, uh, catalyst. And also uh, uh, by using uh, the experiment, uh, experimental uh, results, we also confirm the above uh, calculation results, such as this first uh, cycle charge voltage profiles. We can see that compared to this carbon uh, materials mixed with micro-sized lithium sulfide with very high uh, charging voltage, such as vanadium uh, sulfide and also titanium sulfide, we can reduce uh, the voltage to about 2.8 uh, uh, volts. And also using these uh, CV methods, we can also calculate the lithium uh, island uh, diffusivity. And uh, uh, from the slope, we can also see that this vanadium disulfide and also the cobalt disulfide shows much higher uh, lithium island uh, diffusivity. So indicating a uh, better reaction uh, kinetics. So based on the above discussions, uh, we can imagine that if the materials are with very good uh, catalytic uh, effects as well as the lithium polysulfide absorption capability, and also those very good uh, lithium ion uh, diffusion coefficients, then uh, these kinds of uh, electrodes can show uh, much better performance. So the electrochemical performance test also confirm the above uh, 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 imagination. So we can see that actually the vanadium sulfide based cathode materials shows very good uh, uh, cycling stability and also improved uh, rate uh, performance. So based on the above understanding, we can uh, also further just try to increase uh, the catalytic uh, activity by just decreasing uh, the uh, particle size of the uh, catalyst. Then we can uh, maximum uh, the catalytic efficiency uh, by such as using uh, some single atoms. And uh, uh, by this uh, uh, strategy, that we can actually uh, synthesis this uh, single atoms uh, entered uh, nitrogen doped graphene uh, materials. So here we use the uh, seeding approach that we just seed some uh, nitrogen doped atoms uh, on the graphene and then it can enter this uh, single atom. atom on their surface. So how to choose the uh, single metal atoms? Firstly, we use the uh, theoretical calculations to calculate more than 10 kinds of materials and find that actually such as uh, vanadium-based single atoms 
those very low uh, uh, decomposition uh, energy barrier for lithium sulfide. And also uh, it has very good uh, lithium polysulfide absorption capability. So compared to other single atoms, uh, this one is much better. Then we just choose this one as a, a, a good example to demonstrate. These concepts, and also compare with other uh, uh, three examples. This uh, single uh, vanadium metal uh, catalyst on the uh, nitrogen doped graphene through the uh, TM and also the elemental mapping uh, uh, results. We can see the uh, uniform uh, distribution of the uh, single uh, vanadium metal catalyst distributed on the uh, uh, nitrogen doped graphene, and also uh, uh, come. Uh, through this uh, single trend, uh, results, we can also confirm uh, they are not uh, uh, metal metal bond, but uh, synthesis of the uh, single um, vanadium catalyst on the uh, nitrogen doped graphene. So then we uh, test the uh, lithium sulfur battery performance and confirm actually this uh, single vanadium uh, 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 atom catalyst that's so much better performance compared to uh, only graphene or uh, nitrogen doped graphene based sulfur cathodes. But here uh, it's actually a time consuming process because uh, we just use the DFT calculation to calculate a lot of uh, samples. How could we just uh, uh, have some uh, such as guideline to just help us select the single uh, uh, metal catalyst? So uh, we just consider Usually, uh, the catalytic uh, uh, activity are related to the uh, metal uh, D band, and also uh, they will interact with such as the sulfur species, uh, also uh, maybe uh, 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 work as a P bands uh, for the sulfur species. So, here we just consider maybe we can use the DP uh, orbital hybridization as a discrete atom uh, catalyst. And actually, uh, through the uh, calculation, we found that the lower uh, atomic number, such as titanium, with fewer field uh, anti-bonding uh, states, actually they can uh, form more effective uh, DP orbital hybridization, which can help just reduce the energy barrier during uh, the uh, discharge. and charging process. Uh, that means uh, uh, have lower uh, energy barrier for the uh, conversion from sulfur to lithium sulfide and also the uh, uh, oxidation of lithium sulfide to the uh, effective single metal catalyst that we can reduce the amount of the catalyst that we add into the electrode. So then we can reduce uh, the uh, unnecessary uh, components in the uh, electrode. Then, uh, uh, for the increasing uh, the energy density of the lithium sulfur batteries. So here uh, we can see by using these three-dimensional host materials uh, entered with this very effectively uh, uh, single atoms, such as this uh, um, uh, titanium, we can achieve very high mass loading as well as the high uh, area capacity. So indeed, indicating the effective uh, of the uh, single metal catalyst uh, in uh, promoting the conversion in uh, lithium sulfur batteries. So our previous work, uh, we, we just focused on the uh, sulfur cathode part. And uh, through this slide, I will uh, focus more on uh, in situ uh, characterization, trying to reveal some uh, new mechanism uh, or new phenomena. So we understand that uh, sulfur uh, is a, a solid material uh, at room temperature because uh, it is a uh, melting point is 115 uh, degrees C. So if you heat the sulfur to 115, uh, the solid sulfur will become the molten sulfur. And uh, uh, we can see that the, this is the Lama uh, spectrum for different states of the sulfur uh, broad. And when heated to uh, 115 degrees C, 
uh, you can almost uh, uh, cannot see the, the, these peaks, but can only see one with a uh, very broad uh, wind peaks here. So later, I will use this uh, lunar structure uh, a lot to uh, just indicate the states of the uh, sulfur. So at the next time, uh, we just try to just uh, design some uh, in situ uh, optical uh, microscope. Uh, uh, trying to just observe the sulfur evolution process uh, during the charge. And discharging. And uh, to our surprise, so this is the nickel uh, grid. Uh, we found some, uh, when we repeat uh, these uh, experiments, we find actually it is uh, highly uh, repeatable, so, which means that uh, this is not uh, the uh, decomposition of the electrolyte. So, what are these species? We firstly use the Laman uh, uh, spectroscopy to detect uh, these uh, droplets, and we find uh, their uh, signal are uh, corresponding well with the sulfur powder, indicating uh, these droplets uh, should be uh, sulfur. And uh, we also uh, use uh, in situ actually absorption spectroscopy to confirm uh, this phenomena, such as at the beginning, we use this uh, sulfur H two minus uh, species. There are eight uh, sulfur atoms. This sixth uh, sulfur atom uh, has uh, zero Our valence states and at least two at the edge has a uh, uh, sub minus uh, 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 valence uh, state. And we can see from the uh, spectrum actually, they are two peaks during charging to uh, three words, and uh, all these uh, uh, species become this, and also during uh, uh, discharging. To also uh, indicates that uh, it is highly uh, reversible. So now we can understand actually uh, this droplets like materials uh, is also uh, sulfur. So uh, uh, actually uh, if the materials uh, that, uh, uh, keep the liquid state uh, uh, below the melting point, it means uh, that it is uh, under the super cool uh, states. But it, it is different uh, on different uh, substrates, such as on the most uh, commonly used carbon materials, we cannot uh, see the uh, uh, growth in the discharging process. Uh, they will also uh, slowly uh, disappear. So uh, here, uh, we just want to see what will happen if we put them uh, together. We just use the carbon materials, such as uh, some uh, graphene uh, uh, flakes here to produce this uh, sulfur crystal and using uh, this nickel grid here to just generate this sulfur uh, droplets. And here you can see that when the sulfur crystal touch this um, uh, uh, sulfur droplets, it will uh, quickly uh, solidify, also indicating the onset of the nucleation of the sulfur droplets. So it is a metal stable uh, condition. That's uh, uh, in also suggesting uh, it is a uh, super cool uh, liquid. But uh, although the phenomena is interesting, but uh, uh, here we just come uh, to our mind that's uh, two questions. One is which states are liquid uh, or uh, solid is better for lithium sulfur batteries? And another question is how could we uh, generate the liquid and the solid sulfur uh, controllably? Okay. So here, uh, at that time, we also try to uh, use these two-dimensional materials as the substrate to glow uh, sulfur and try to understand the growth behavior. And here, uh, actually, you can see on the same materials, this time we can just glow two kinds of sulfur. So uh, here, you can see that on the edge side, uh, we can glow sulfur crystal, but on the basal plan, uh, actually, uh, we can uh, glow liquid sulfur. So this uh, state is also corresponding well with this Laman uh, uh, spectrum. We can see that this is the uh, liquid sulfur. We can see the uh, white wind peaks here. 
And for the solid sulfur, we can also see the ob obvious uh, peaks here below 100 per uh, centimeter. So we also use this uh, polarized Laman spectroscope uh, to confirm the sulfur states. So if the uh, sulfur is in the uh, crystalline uh, states, then if we rotate the materials, they will uh, show different Laman signal. So here you can see that when we rotate the uh, sulfur crystal from zero degree to 90 degree, you can see these two peaks uh, disappeared, indicating uh, 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 the crystalline uh, structure. But for the liquid sulfur, uh, it's usually uh, amorphous states. So no matter you rotate it to any uh, angle, such as from zero degree to 90 degree, it will keep the original uh, uh, Laman uh, signal here. Just the same uh, uh, Laman uh, peaks, also conforming the uh, uh, liquid sulfur uh, is amorphous. So here, I just want to briefly uh, explain why this at the edge site we will uh, form this sulfur crystal. That's because uh, usually uh, through such as console uh, simulation or MD simulation, we can see that the electrical field is much stronger uh, at the edge site. So then it will cause the uh, concentration of the uh, lithium polysulfides uh, become higher. And when the value uh, become very high, such as uh, rich uh, saturated states, then it will, uh, on a solid uh, sulfur crystal, will uh, be precipitated out. And uh, also uh, through the uh, molecular dynamic simulation, we can also see for the basal plane, the contact angle is very large compared to the uh, edge side, uh, the contact angle is lower. That means uh, that it's more uh, wettable, okay? The wetting angle is uh, smaller. That means uh, it will promote the uh, heterogeneous uh, nucleation will also uh, help form the sulfur uh, crystal. So based on the above understanding, actually we can now control the formation of uh, liquid sulfur and also uh, solid sulfur crystal. So we just control the same uh, 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 surface area and then uh, we can compare their gross behavior and also compare their battery performance. So here I will show two videos here. Uh, on the left panel, you can see the liquid uh, sulfur droplet. Uh, on the right panel, it will uh, become solid very soon. And uh, you can see uh, the uh, capacity, just the area capacity is also uh, uh, quite different. So the liquid one will show two to three times higher uh, area capacity compared to the uh, solid one. And also, uh, we just uh, uh, compare the battery performance at different uh, voltage and so the similar uh, phenomena. That's the liquid one, uh, so it's two to three times higher area capacity compared to the solid one. So we can briefly uh, explain here, for the solid uh, sulfur crystal, when they cover the surface, uh, no uh, uh, active site can be assessed by other sulfur species. But for the liquid one, you can see when two droplets uh, uh, touch each other, they will form a larger one. So uh, we are leaving some uh, new uh, active sites for the sulfur species to assess, uh, assess and then contribute uh, for the uh, capacity. So this is the reason uh, why liquid uh, uh, sulfur can contribute higher uh, capacity. But previous work are mainly focused on uh, two-dimensional materials or just the planar structure. So uh, we know that in practical, uh, in no matter coin cell or pot cells, we will use uh, three-dimensional uh, structured uh, materials. So here, uh, uh, we just uh, also think out that we can use nickel form because previously we used the uh, nickel grid. So uh, the nickel form is the three-dimensional structure of uh, nickel. And we just try to see whether it will also uh, form this uh, uh, sulfur droplet. And also we understand that a nickel form is a very good template for the growth of graphene. So we can easily uh, glow uh, graphene on the surface of the nickel and then form this graphene coated uh, nickel form. So uh, this slide shows that this is the nickel form and this is the graphene glowing on the nickel form forming this composite. And through uh, Laman spectrum, we can also see this uh, D band and G band and 2D band indicating the good quality of the graphene. And here, uh, I just want to show these two videos together. You can see that on the left one is the nickel form, uh, another one is graphene coated nickel form. You can see on the nickel form, we can also controllably glow the uh, liquid sulfur droplet, but on the uh, graphene coated nickel form, 
we can just uh, uh, glow this uh, sulfur uh, crystal. Also, uh, conforming that's actually we can use this three dimensional structure to uh, glow uh, uh, liquid sulfur droplets as well as this uh, sulfur crystal on different uh, uh, substrates. So here uh, we just capture uh, some slides uh, from the videos and compare uh, their, uh, their kinetics. We can see that such as at uh, 90 second, you can see that on the uh, nickel form, there are uh, much more uh, sulfur droplets compared to the uh, sulfur crystal on the graphic coated uh, nickel form, indicating the uh, reaction kinetic uh, is much faster uh, on the surface of uh, nickel uh, foam. Uh, and this is also easily uh, understood because uh, the uh, uh, liquid one, uh, such as from liquid to liquid, uh, is much faster uh, than the uh, liquid solid uh, conversion. And also uh, the battery performance test is also uh, uh, the same uh, trend as uh, the nickel with the liquid subjoplates, so uh, higher capacity and better uh, cycling stability. But here we will also see that actually um, the nickel form is quite heavy. So we just want to reduce the weight of the nickel form. So we further just using the, this electrolysis deposition method to just uh, deposit the nickel on the surface of this uh, melamine form, which is very lightweight. And we can also see this three dimensional structure, which can also uh, glow uh, liquid sulfur uh, controllably. Uh, from uh, charging process and then discharging, they will uh, slowly uh, disappear. And also uh, at a relative high mass loading, they can still uh, contribute uh, high capacity and uh, uh, stable cycling performance. Now uh, I will come to the uh, conclusion part. So uh, in my talk, uh, the physical confinement, chemical bonding and the catalytic uh, effects uh, can be used to alleviate the shortening effects and also improve the cycling stability and the in-situ uh, obstacle uh, observation and also lama spectroscopy can help us uh, provide in-depth understanding of the uh, batteries uh, in different aspects. And uh, based on this understanding, we can design this lightweight and three-dimensional nickel-based electrode to just control the position and also with, uh, catalytic conversion of sulfur species towards uh, high-performance uh, lithium sulfur batteries. So finally, uh, I would like to thank uh, all my uh, advisors and also colleagues uh, for their support and help. And also thanks to all my uh, uh, group members who contribute uh, to these works and also thanks to the funding support. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, any questions and comments are welcome. Great, thank you uh, for the nice talk. Uh, Jia, as always, uh, you can uh, maybe convey the questions from other platform uh, here, since uh, the Zoom platform, we cannot see the questions. Yeah, for the moment, I also haven't acquired a question for okay. Professor Joe's talk. I think for me personally, it's very clear, very well organized. I understand. Everything what uh, yeah, Professor Joe is talking. Yeah, we can also uh, you know the uh, panelists can also ask questions. So um, yeah, I think Yuan, if you have any questions, uh, please yeah, go. Maybe, ask. Yeah, maybe yeah, ask a question. So yeah, the uh, formation of the liquid sulfur, the over two sulfur, is very impressive. Just curious. So uh, how did you uh, eliminate the possibility of amorphous uh, sulfur. So is that possible it's amorphous so that you don't see, uh, I, I just don't know the uh, aroma of amorphous, is that similar to the liquid phase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so uh, actually uh, I have uh, just saw the slides, actually that uh, we confirm that the uh, liquid sulfur droplet should be at the uh, amorphous state. So, uh, we cannot see um, just where we advise uh, peaks uh, just below uh, 100 uh, wavelengths. Yeah, I, I mean, could it be a solid amorphous sulfur? Oh, um, yeah, this is a good question. So actually, um, uh, we just use uh, some of this uh, crystal sulfur or sulfur to just uh, conform their structure. 
Uh, by using mm -hmm. uh, Lama, actually we cannot uh, confirm they are uh, crystalline or not. Um, I just uh, don't push the slides here. Actually, during the uh, revealing process, uh, the reviewer just asked us to provide the TM uh, in, uh, just the uh, uh, image of the sulfur to confirm their uh, crystalline structure. But uh, you know that sulfur is uh, very difficult to obtain their uh, image uh, under the TM due to the uh, radiation, uh, very high voltage radiation. So actually we have the uh, diffraction uh, pattern uh, for the sulfur and uh, uh, very clear uh, pattern structure, I think can confirm uh, the uh, crystalline structure uh, for this uh, sulfur we formed on the, uh, such as carbon uh, surface. Okay, got it, thanks. Yeah, thank you for your question. Yeah, for me also, like Professor Joey introduced the different strategies like this uh, physical barrier, chemical bonds, and also catalytic effect. So I'm curious, so I'm not uh, like from this battery field. So I'm just curious. So can we say like the, comb the combination of this three strategy will make better perform, perform the battery or we see it depends, like sometimes like you can achieve high performance just by physical barrier or just the other thing. So just curious, but thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Jia. Very good question. So actually, uh, um, uh, your question is very good. Uh, I agree with you that if we combine these three strategies uh, together, uh, it will promote uh, the battery performance. So actually, although I just uh, ascribe uh, uh, such as this strategy, uh, strategy to the third one, Actually, we use the uh, carbon host materials. It also has the uh, physical confinement by using the uh, carbon materials. And also the uh, metal catalyst also uh, will interact uh, with the sulfur species, also have uh, chemical bonding uh, between them. So I think uh, usually we cannot uh, just separate them uh, very clearly, but uh, uh, usually they will uh, just uh, combine together but we can just uh, uh, emphasize uh, one uh, aspect uh, in some work. Yeah, I agree that uh, if we can combine these three together, it will contribute to a better uh, battery performance. Okay, yeah, got you, thank you. Yeah, um, no problem. Yeah, um, so maybe I have a, a more general question, uh, Guanmin, for you. Uh, okay. in, in all of your design, it's very interesting. You are utilizing a uh, different strategy uh, to uh, design better uh, software electrode. Um, have you looked into the interface between the software electrode and the electrolyte? Uh, because we know that um, uh, polysulfide decomposition uh, happens mostly uh, uh, along the interface. So have you looked into the interfacial effect uh, in different designs uh, you discussed today? Okay, yeah, Professor Lo, very good question. So actually, uh, this is a very important uh, aspect that we need to uh, just pay attention to, that's for the interface. So uh, uh, actually, uh, um, uh, usually uh, we consider this interface such as uh, in, uh, such as in the uh, theoretical calculation. Uh, for example, if we uh, consider uh, the bonding between the uh, lithium polysulfide with this uh, catalyst, we will consider uh, the interface. And uh, uh, for the electrode uh, part, that's if we consider uh, this electrolyte and the uh, electrodes uh, for the interface, usually uh, because this is the uh, cathode part, uh, for anode part, we can easily uh, form such as the uh, SEI solid uh, 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 electrolyte interface. But for the sulfur part, and that's the CI is not uh, easily uh, observed. So usually uh, uh, we will only consider such as the interaction uh, between the uh, electrodes uh, with the uh, lithium polysulfides or the catalyst with the uh, 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 lithium polysulfide. And uh, uh, for the interface in my um, uh, in situ uh, optical uh, observations, actually we can see some of the uh, interface between uh, maybe the substrate and the uh, uh, liquid parts. That's we can see the such as the uh, layer contacts and also layer uh, maybe layer contacts angle. Yeah, this is my answer uh, to this question. Yeah, actually, this is okay. a very important part. Yeah. 
All right. All right. Um, I have one. Like, if we don't have any more questions for Professor Joe, then there's one missing question for Professor Yang. So for the previous okay. talk. Mm -hmm. 